In the 1950s, a cult in the U.S. believed the world would be destroyed by a flood on December 21, 1954. Many of its members were so convinced that they left their jobs and gave away all their possessions. And then came December 22nd. As you can imagine, the group felt, you know, a gnawing sense of discomfort, but they also contributed a lot to the field of psychology. See, three social psychologists had infiltrated this group, and one of them, named Leon Festinger, gave a name to the group's inner conflict. He called it cognitive dissonance, and it's now a huge area of research you have probably even experienced it before. But cognitive dissonance isn't always a bad thing. In fact, it can be a major way we grow, at least if you know how to spot it. Cognitive dissonance is a state of uneasiness that happens when you have inconsistent beliefs or behaviors. You may have felt it when you learned new information about the world that contradicted something you'd believed for a long time. Or maybe you learned something about your behavior that conflicted with your sense of self. For example, someone might experience cognitive dissonance if they believe they're not a prejudiced person, but after a psychological test, they realize they have a lot of implicit biases. This discomfort can come up in all kinds of scenarios, though, and we can even see it in the brain, notably in the region that monitors errors in your thoughts and actions, the one involved in rationalizing and cognitive control, and one likely involved in emotions, especially anger and disgust. Of course, knowing how our brains respond to this stress doesn't make these feelings any easier, and it also doesn't make it easier to admit we're wrong. Instead, how hard it is to change your mind about something depends on what psychologists call your resistance to change. And that trait depends on a few factors, such as how much you identify with your belief, how much satisfaction you get from your behavior, and how much pain or loss you'd have to endure to change those things. For example, let's say you see yourself as an advocate for the environment, but then you learn that the company you work for makes, like, evil villain levels of pollution and refuses to change. If you don't like the job and you have another opportunity, you'd probably just leave. Your resistance to changing your behavior would be pretty low. But if you've been working there for years and are really invested in the company and the community and culture there, quitting would be harder because you'd experience more loss. So your resistance to change would be much higher. One way around this would be to change your belief, to decide that and maybe you're not that much of an environmental advocate after all. But if that's not an option, your brain might try other strategies to reduce your uneasiness. For instance, you might try to rationalize your thinking or behavior by finding positive things about your company, or you might think of things that are even worse and make your company seem lovely by comparison. Like, you might remind yourself that your company creates jobs and a better quality of life for some people. Or you might read stories about other companies that dump toxic waste directly into people's mouths and think, well, you're your company at least isn't doing that, so they're fairly green by comparison. Then you can keep thinking of yourself as an advocate with a clean conscience. This is just an example, of course. Cognitive dissonance can apply to all kinds of ways we interact with the world, and there are also plenty of other ways we tend to react to it. Like, we might try and protect ourselves from discomfort by engaging in selective exposure. That's where someone only listens to people and media sources that agree with them, and they dismiss other voices that challenge their worldview. Studies suggest that we might also do this internally. We skew our memories to reduce the feeling that our thoughts are inconsistent. For example, in a 2014 paper, 121 students who didn't want their tuition to increase were asked to write an essay supporting higher tuition. Afterward, they became more in favor of tuition increases, but they also misremembered themselves as being okay with higher tuition in the first place. And finally, there's the most simple thing. When faced with evidence that we might be wrong, our brains can just completely ignore whatever's making us uncomfortable. The point is, we really don't like feeling inconsistent, and consciously or not, we'll go a long way to reduce the feeling that our thoughts or actions don't line up with the way we see ourselves or the world. Still, cognitive dissonance isn't always bad. There are fewer studies about this, but it seems like this discomfort can also help us grow and make better decisions, like by leaving an unhealthy job or identifying biased beliefs. So, what what can you do about your brain's clever schemes to reduce it? Well, psychologists recommend you pay attention to your initial response to new information and remind yourself you're probably
probably more biased than you want to think. Then you can make a deliberate effort to question your response and analyze it. And also, it doesn't hurt to do some research to make sure your beliefs and actions are based on evidence and not on the tricky games your brain is playing to ease your inner conflict. Because in some cases, the first step to defeating your own brain is knowing what it's up to. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow Psych. This channel is all about understanding our minds and how they work. And we've done episodes on everything from mental health to implicit bias. If you want to learn more, you can watch another episode after this one, or you can hit that subscribe button.